All right, hey, I'm Steven from Rugged Routes, back for another quick tutorial on Lowrance Off-Road GPS units. Today we're gonna be jumping in on an Elite FS7. I've gotten some requests to do videos with this particular unit. Um, I don't plan on going back and redoing all the other videos that I did for the HDS Live series on this unit just because the vast majority of that stuff does transfer over. But if anybody has any trouble following those directions, on the Elite FS7, please let me know. I'm happy to redo the videos. I just don't want to exactly recreate every, you know, something that I've done on a, another video um, without, without having a bigger purpose, I guess is what I'm saying. So if I, you know, I definitely want to help you guys out, make sure all the information is there. I just don't want to go back and redo stuff unnecessarily. So let me know in the comments what videos you guys need on the Elite FS and I will make it happen. But the primary purpose for this video today is to move files and import and export data from a Lorenz GPS unit without an SD card. We're gonna do it over the network, over Wi-Fi. And this was kind of triggered based off of a, a poll that I did on Instagram that was saying that this web page had never been seen by anybody which is kind of wild at first to think about because this has been something on Lowrance for a very, very long time, but I've never seen it documented anywhere and I've known about it for like nine or 10 years. So I guess I've been kind of holding out on you guys. So today's the day we kind of pull back the curtain on a few extra behind the scenes uh, kind of secrets, I guess, on, on Lowrance. So in order to get started, we first need to connect our GPS to a network of some sort, right? So. We'll do that on this Elite FS here. We're gonna hit the Pages button, jump over into the Settings, and then on the left side, we'll scroll down and we'll go to Wireless. So there's two ways to do this. The very top option is gonna say Connect to the Internet. So that's if you are like at home and you're trying to connect to your home Wi-Fi connection and the computer that you wanna to use to connect to your GPS is also on that same network. All right, so you could do it that way or you can, let's say you're in the middle of nowhere, you don't have a Wi-Fi network to work with, so you can, you can just connect directly to the GPS. And that's where the second option here uh, comes into play. It says connect your phone slash tablet. And when you click on that, a box will pop up that gives you the network name and the network password. I know the video is a little fuzzy right now. I'm hoping it's gonna clear up. It has to do with the software configuration I'm using now. Something's changed. I'm trying to work with it. So hopefully you guys stick with me here. Uh, so if you're gonna use your phone or tablet or something or laptop, and you're gonna connect directly to it. Let's say you're in the middle of the desert or you're trying to get ready for a race and you just wanna upload it directly over Wi-Fi. just connect straight to the, the GPS. Uh, if you're on a phone, just scan that QR code. It'll jump you on the, the network pretty dang quick. So uh, from there, once you're connected, uh, we will come down to the network option on the left side here. And on the right column at the very top, it says info. So on this page, I know it's hard to see, but just uh, bear with me here. I'll light these things up in blue. Um, the the built-in Wi-Fi IP address is going to be populated if you connected to your home Wi-Fi network. In my case, that address is 192.168.1.93. Now, if you connected directly to the GPS, the address is always going to be 192.168.76.1. And I'll put that in the comments below or in the, the description below this video. Uh, so if you're connecting to your home network, that IP address is gonna change and be different depending on what router you have and how it distributes IP addresses on your network. So I don't know what that address is going to be for you. So you're gonna to have to look in this window. But if you're connecting directly to it, the GPS always uses 192.168.76.1. All right, so I'm gonna make note of those, either remember it or jot it down and we'll get out of this screen. Hopefully this clears up. Let's see if we can't get this to get uh, get cleared up. Here we go. So 
I'll jump back into that screen really quick. Um, hopefully it stays clear. Here we go. So we'll jump down into here, network info, and this is what I'm talking about, the IP addresses. This one will always be the same if you connect directly to the GPS, and this one will be different depending on your home network. So I'll jump out. Now, you wrote down that IP address. Now for example's sake, I'm gonna need some sample data. There's absolutely nothing in this GPS except the San Bernardino National Forest map card. By the way, if you need maps, definitely check out ruggedroutes.com. We've got a handful of different maps available. We can even do custom stuff if you guys need. So definitely uh, check out uh, ruggedroutes.com. I appreciate it. So sample data, we're just gonna drop some waypoints. This random sample stuff here. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to with anything that I'm dropping in here. It's completely just off the cuff here. So we've got three waypoints here. Let's see if we get this to clear up again. There we go. Uh, so we got these three waypoints in here and that's, just, that's our sample data. So with that IP address that we originally had, we're gonna open up a web browser and we're gonna just type that in the address bar. So I've typed the one that I've got uh, because I'm on a local network and my computer and everything's all connected together. So I typed in 192.168.1.93, I hit enter and I get this web page that allows me to very easily hit download and that's going to download the USR file. Um, it's just ba basically backing everything up just like you would export a USR file, this does the same thing. So I just went ahead and saved that in my downloads folder. And now to prove that that worked, well, see it just downloaded. Boop, I got a couple in here because I tried doing this video a few times. But anyways, this is my most recent one for this video. And we'll jump back over to the GPS just so I can purge everything out of here and show you guys that this in fact does work. Hit delete all. I'm going to get rid of everything. Um, there we go. So you can see I purged and deleted everything in here. And now you can see that those waypoints went away. Now, Back in the web browser, we're going to choose a file. We're just going to upload that file straight back to the GPS. And you just hit choose file, choose your folder, or your choose file, then choose the file. And then we're going to just hit submit. But before I hit submit, we'll jump back to the GPS because when you hit submit, a box pops up and it says, hey, a new user data file has been uploaded. Do you want to import it? When you click yes, boom. Now you can see straight away that our waypoints are already back. Now, if you're racing or have a lot of friends that are all using Lowrance, USR files are great, right? It's actually a pretty common format, especially in the racing world, off-road racing. But if you have a need to upload a GPX file, what do you do? Well, we've got a solution for that too. So I'm gonna close my browser and we're gonna use what's called an FTP program, a file transfer protocol. So I'm gonna get this fired up here on another screen and then I'll, I'll walk you guys through it here. There we go, my other screen. So I use this program called FileZilla and there's apps on phones and tablets and all sorts of stuff to uh, do this exact same thing. And this will allow you to take files and just literally store them on the GPS and you can import them when you're back at the unit. So you can have it turned on in the car as long as you have, you're within Wi-Fi distance or you're connected to it somehow on a network, uh, you, can, you can drop files directly on the GPS pretty easily. So uh, up here in the host, so this is the IP address of the GPS. I'm gonna put the one in for uh, my GPS here hit enter and this box pops up just click okay 
and now it's already connected. From here, you have access to the files that are internal to the GPS, not all the files, but the files that they let us see, as well as the memory card. So I have the San Bernardino National Forest uh, map card in here, and that's where all this stuff's coming from. But let's pretend we didn't have that map card in here, or let's just say the weather's really bad and our race truck's outside and we're hunkered down in an RV and we're gonna push files to our GPS. So we're going to be able to Take a GPX file. I think I have one in here somewhere. Where did I do with it? Here we go. Say we have like our GPX um, backup file here. We're gonna take that. We can just drag it over to the updaters folder. Doop. Apparently I already had it in there, but it just overwrote it. And when we click on that, we can now see that the GPX backup folder is there. Um, if you wanna get more organized, I actually recommend, it's probably a good idea for you to create a new folder. Maybe like My Files. How about that? So now, now we have a My Files folder and we can keep everything organized in there. We'll take that same GPX and we'll, we'll drag and drop it into the GPS. And just to prove that this is actually working, we'll jump back over to the GPS. We'll hit Pages. We'll go to Storage under My Files. Look, now we have a new folder. Oh, we're getting ahead of the feed here. Here we go. My files. And there's a the thing there that says GPX backup. Hopefully this clears it up. Here we go. So there's a GPX file. And if we tap on it, we can import it. Import complete. It's all good. Obviously, we already had those, those in there. But... Um, Oh yeah, this was an old older GPX files. So now we have uh, now we got all the waypoints, right? The ones from our USR and the GPX are both imported into the GPS. Now let's say if you needed to go the other way, you can do that too. Now that we have two different files uh, combined in there, we have multiple waypoints. Let's export them so we can export everything. We're going to export everything as a GPX file export but we're going to keep it on the gps and we're going to put it in under the my files folder it's just the one i made up just for kicks uh here i'm going to click ok uh and let's create a new one let's see demo yeah sure why not there we go so that went ahead and exported and to prove that, we'll jump back over to the computer. We'll refresh this. And now we can see that our Waypoints Routes Trails demo.gpx file is here. So I hope that helps. I hope I didn't lose you guys. If you have questions about this one, please drop comments below the video. I know this one got a little bit more technical and I'm trying to move fast so the video is not super long. Um, I've had a number of takes on this video trying to shorten it up and trying to be as clear and concise as possible but I keep ending up at about 13 minutes or so. So I hope this is helpful. If you guys have any other video ideas of things that you want to see, please drop them in the comments and I will make sure to get them done. Also, make sure to check me out on Instagram. Check out Rugged Routes on Instagram for some behind the scenes stuff of just kind of what's going on, product development, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely be back. I've got another video in mind, so I'll get that recorded and pushed off to YouTube before too long as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.